Hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments here. And this is a continuation on the series where I break down formula solutions to the Excel BI LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should. It will definitely help boost your Excel formula and Power Query game. Now to the challenge at hand. Relatively simple. But I'll try to explain it as well as I can. <laughs> okay, so you have a couple of words right here. So each maybe cell or string contains multiple words separated by a comma space. And what you want to do is pretty much just reverse the order of the words. Okay, so it means that here where you have apple, banana, papaya, then you go right to left. So it becomes papaya, banana, apple. When you have single words, they remain, you know, pretty much the same. That's really the question not the most difficult you know different approaches but just to demonstrate i guess just one let me switch over to the formulas tab here and it's very simple really and the logic i'm using here was the most common solution you know um, on the linkedin page which really uses a sort so what i'll do first of all is this before you can recombine in any other you must first of all split right so i do a check split okay and I split, let's say, this using the delimiter, which is a comma space, as you all can see. Okay. So now it goes in this order, right? The easiest way, you know, to get this reversed is if you had a series of numbers which are in descending order, for example. So if I had three and I had two and I had one, and then I said, you know, Excel, please sort, you know, this based on three to one, right? What then happens? Because I'm sorting ascending by default. So it means if I sort these elements, you know, by this, it would pick one first, then two, then three, right? So it then gives me that in reverse. This is really what I need. So what you want to be able to do is just, you know, to create this sequence, which goes, you know, in descending order, you know, and it really it doesn't have to follow three, two, one, really. It could be three, one, and say minus one. Okay, it's the same thing so long as you have it in descending order, that's fine, right? So that's really the logic we're going to use. But we can stick to the three, two, one. So we just need to know the number of elements you have. If there are four elements, meaning that four words, then do four, three, two, one. If there are five elements, five, four, three, two, one. That's really what it is. Okay, so we'll write it first in one cell, then we would then adjust the formula so that it can spill to other cells. So I'll start up again. So now I do a check split and then I do my comma space. Okay, so now I'm going to do a sort. So I'm going to sort by, so it means I'm sorting these elements that I have, you know, by what exactly. So I'm going to create using the sequence function. You know, and you know, I want to do like a three, two, one, if you remember that example. Well, how do I get three? I get three by counting the number of elements when I do the text split. So, meaning that I can just do a count A of that same text split. Because when you split, right, you would have a certain number of words. So, I just want you to count, and based on that, that should be, you know, the number of elements it should return. Then, I can put a step of minus one. That's really what helps me to create a sequence in descending order, not ascending. So what will happen in this case, because I haven't put maybe, for example, a start, um, you know, argument there. It means it's going to start. First element will be one. Then it decreases because the step is minus one. So it's one minus one, zero, then minus one and two. But I'm, I'm minus two. I'm not really interested in the exact numbers in the sequence. I just need something to go in descending order and have enough elements based on the number of words I have. So that's really it. So I close the bracket and I close the sort by. Okay. So I have what I want. And once I get to this point, you know, I recombine, right? So concatenate, but now concatenating with a delimiter, which is comma space. So you could use text join, you know, text join, you put a comma space, as your delimiter, whatever you do here is fine for now, <laughs> you know, and then close the bracket. You know, you have what you need. You could also have used instead of the text join, you could use the array to text, which is an interesting one. So it just takes the individual elements and creates an array, you know, from those texts. And the delimiter there is a comma space. So you do array text to text and you have the same thing. So once you have this, what most people may want to do is to drag down. 
but that's what we see now these days we really don't do that we write the formula in one cell and have it spilled to the other cells so what do you do in this case you introduce most likely one of the lambda helper functions you could use by row you could use map what you're saying is for example using the map this is the transformation right it means that if i have a2 right i want a2 to be transformed to what i've written here so what you're just saying if you use the map function and you feed it with a2 to a5 is to say for a2 do this transformation everywhere it sees a2 you know it does the transformation for a2 it goes to a3 so it means that a3 essentially replaces all the a2s in this expression the same thing to four and five pretty much is really what you're doing it's more like doing the same thing and iterating over you know all the elements that the map is giving so let's start up using the map very simple so you just do map and you take the four elements here right and then you introduce your lambda and you have a variable this variable essentially is your iterator that's how i think of it so this x will first represent a2 when it performs the transformation it will represent a3 represent a4 represent a5 so essentially what you're saying is that this whole expression you have here you don't need to hard code a2 anymore because you want it to be able to go from elements to the next element of this array in the map so i pretty much will just change all the a2s to x there are not a lot of them right so change this to x okay and then i can close here i'll close the lambda and i close the map okay and i have you know what i want and just for readability and maybe just to speed it up a little since i can see that i have text split here you know and i see it occurring twice i could take this out here and maybe in here i could just introduce a let for example i can say let a be that text split okay so what it means is that everywhere i see this text split you know i change this to a right and i come in here instead of doing count of this text split i just say do a count of what of a okay and then we need to close one more bracket and we have exactly the same thing but this you know maybe it looks a little better <laughs> yeah but if you understand it you understand it and sometimes you know you want to just as in break it apart i know the advanced formula environment is very good for this but you could do some of your alt enters you know just for readability so let me expand Control shift u right okay so and then maybe at the left you know break down and then the final expression here okay so pretty much map a2 to a5 you're using x as your variable to loop through these elements then use a let function your a represents you know all the elements of the text split and then the final expression well this is just me trying to make it more elegant but in terms of how it works that's really how it works not a very complex one but just showing you you know a few ideas in there so if you like this video please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now I'm out.